up, everybody? Instructor Beats back again, getting on the train today with linear equations. Today is our fifth video in our linear equation playlist, and we are going to be simplifying linear equations today using the distributive property. So let's hop on the train and see where it takes us. Our objective today, today I will be able to simplify and solve linear equations using the distributive property. So our steps for simplifying equations are the same one from last lesson. The only difference is today we are going to be focusing on step number one, which is what is the distributive property and how do we use it to simplify. And then just like the other day, we're going to be combining like terms in the two expressions. We'll be isolating the variables to one side. We'll be using the inverse operation to simplify addition and subtraction. And we are going to use the inverse operation to simplify multiplication and division by creating a value of one. So we have an awesome song about the distributive property. Go ahead and push play on that. This is giving and property. Yeah, break it up. It ain't just a novelty. Now wake on up. It means that you're scholarly. Multiply it up. That's distributed property. Yeah, add it up. Yes, that is one of my favorite. However, that is the... Uh, third grade standard for distributive property. We're getting into linear equations today. So although it's similar, it is a little bit different in how it is used in this context that we're going to be talking about today. So here we have an example. Um, and let me show you really quickly, just in case you're not familiar with it, how to simplify with the distributive property. So basically, we're going to distribute the three out. So the number outside the parentheses to both the numbers inside the parentheses, okay? So instead of grouping these inside, we are going to be um, doing three groups of 3x plus three groups of one, and then adding them together, okay? So that's kind of like, exactly like the third grade standard. So instead of adding uh, the numbers inside the parentheses and then multiplying by three, we are breaking apart with the distributive property. So if I were to simplify this and rewrite this with the distributive property, I would have three times three X will be nine X plus three times one would be three, right? Pretty simple. Let's look at one more example. So here I have a negative two outside my parentheses. So when I distribute my negative two, I'm going to be using my uh, rules of negative numbers. So negative 2 times 8 is going to be negative 16. To rewrite whatever sign is inside my parentheses, just like I did right here on the 9x plus 3. However, for this one, because you're using your negative number rules, negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4, and then the variable is x. This is giving in property. Okay. So that is how we simplify with the distributive property. Let's go ahead and look at how, what an actual equation would look like with adding this into a step. So here I have 4 equals 2, uh, in parentheses, c plus negative 1 minus 4. Okay, so as always, we know that this is a balanced equation right here. Our two expressions should be equal to each other. So there should be a solution for this expression over here that's going to equal 4. So the first thing I want to do is, I, step number one, I want to use the distributive property to simplify if I can, and I do have that here. So I'm going to distribute my 2 out, and I have 2 times c, which is going to be 2c, and then I have 2 times negative 1, so I can still write that and then just put my negative 2 in parentheses right here, minus 4, and then 4 equals those as well. Okay, so now my next step is I want to combine like terms. So I have two constants here. I have negative 2 and negative 4. So that's going to combine to adding a negative 6 right here. Okay, and then I have my 4. And then to get rid of, right, because I want to isolate the variables on one side. And so I'm going to be uh, doing the inverse operation of negative 6, which would be adding 6. So whatever I do to that side, I'll do to this side. I have 10 equals 2 groups of C. And now I've done all of these. I want to use my inverse operation of multiplication, which is division, to create a 1 on this side. So now I just have 1C. Whatever I do to this side, I have to do that side. So I think my solution is 5 equals C. Okay, so now I want to come over here and I want to just check that. And so I have 5 plus negative 1. Oops, there we go. Uh, minus 4. Okay, now I'm going to 
do my parentheses first. That's going to be 4 minus 4, 8 minus 4, and then I'm going to combine those. And I can see here that my equations is balanced. Time to have a party. And that's how you do it. Okay, so let's try a we do problem. You can go ahead and pause the video and try this one out if you would like to, and then push play and see how we did. If not, it's okay. Growth mindset. You can do it with me right now. So the first thing I want to do is I want to solve out my distributive property. Okay. So I had negative 7 times negative x. That's going to be a positive 7x. And then I had negative 7 times 6, which is going to be a negative 42. So just subtracting 42 here. And on this side, I still have my negative 15x. I want to group my like terms over here. So I have two different constants right here, right? C and C. Negative 2 and negative 44 will group together to make negative, or 42 will group together to make negative 44. Then I'll be adding 7x still. So I'm going to have negative 15x equals those. Now I want to isolate my variable, so I'm going to bring my 7x to the other side. So it's positive 7x, which means I want to do the inverse operation to create a 0. Okay, And I'm going to have negative 44, negative 15 minus 7 is negative 22x. Now I have done all of these. I need to use my inverse operation of division to, or of multiple, sorry, of division to simplify my multiplication. So I'm going to create a 1 right here by dividing by the same number. And I'm going to have x equals negative 44 divided by negative 22 should be 2. And so I think my variable x is equal to 2 for this equation. So now I want to go and I want to check it. So I have negative 15 times 2 equals negative 2 minus 7 groups of negative 2 plus 6. Obviously, this would be negative 30 on this side. I'm going to simplify uh, my, or sorry, I'm not going to simplify. I'm going to group my parentheses together. So that should be positive 4 right here when I combine that. Then I'm going to have negative 2 minus 28 because I have a negative 7 times positive 4. And I can see here that negative 30 is, in fact, equal to negative 30. So my solution of 2 for x was correct. All right, we are about to enter the challenge zone. Um, if you are ready to try this one by yourself, please go ahead and try it out. Try to simplify it and then do the check and push play. If you're not, it's okay. We'll do it with you. There's lots of different variables going on. You can do it if you just follow our five steps, okay? So the first thing I want to do is I want to use the distributive property to simplify for this expression over here, right? So I'm going to distribute out the 9. So I'm going to have 20x minus 54x plus 180 equals 3 minus 20x minus 19. Now, if you went ahead and started to combine your variables on or your like terms on this side, that's okay too. I just didn't do that. So now 20x minus 54x, it's time to combine my like terms, is going to be negative 34x plus 180 is going to equal, and I have two constants here. I have a positive 3 and a negative 19. So I'm going to combine those, which is going to make a negative 16. Now I want to isolate my variables on one side. So it doesn't matter which side you bring them to. I'm just going to go ahead and do plus 34x here, which will cancel out, and then plus 34x here. And when you add those together, you're going to have 14x minus 16 equals 180. I now want to make a zero with my constants. And whatever I do to one side, I have to do to the other. I've made my zero. I have 196 equals 14x. And now I want to uh, use my multiplication and division to create a value of 1. So I'm going to use my inverse operation of multiplication and divide. And I'm going to do 196 divided by 14, which is actually going to equal 14. Okay. Now, for these, you can go ahead and use a calculator when you're doing these types of division problems, because really the focus is not on the computational problem. If you don't know how to divide, 
with the two-digit divisor at this point, you probably shouldn't be doing these lessons, right? So you can use a calculator to go ahead and solve uh, questions like 196 divided by 14. So I think my variable solution is 14, okay? So now I want to go back and check it. Because this is kind of a long equation, I'm not going to rewrite it. I'm actually just going to erase uh, my work right here. So if you haven't written it down, go ahead and pause it because I will erase it. And voila, it is gone. And so if I remember correctly, x was supposed to equal to 14. So I'm going to have 20 groups of 14 plus 9 oops, groups of negative 6 times 14 plus 20 is going to equal 3 minus 20 groups of 14 minus 19. All right, that's a lot, but that's okay. So right here I have 280 plus 9 groups of negative 84 plus 20 minus 3 subtract 280 minus 19. So now when I do this, I need to distribute out my 9 here, right? So 9 times 84 and 9 times 20, which is negative, there we go, 756 plus 180, and then I'm just going to start kind of doing these together. So I'm going to have 3 minus 299, because I'm going to combine these first. Then over here, uh, so I'll just keep going right here. So I have 280 plus negative 756. That'll be negative 476 plus 180. When I subtract these, that should be negative 296 over here. And then if I take 476 and I add negative 476 and I add 180 to it, it will be negative 296. So I can see when I did that very complicated check that my value of x was a correct solution. And my equation was balanced when that was my solution. If you got that one right, congratulations on mastering the challenge zone. If not, don't worry. There's extra practice. We can always get better. Thank you so much for checking out Instructive Beats today. We really appreciate you spending your time with us. Please like and subscribe if you have not done that already. Feel free to check out our YouTube page at, at Instructive Beats Official. You can always follow us on Instagram at, at Instructive Beats. Thank you so much for spending your time today. Time to hop off the train and go do something else. Instruct the beat. Out.